Hi, I'm Gene Benson. During my many years as a flight instructor, I have found that many pilots don't have a good understanding of the turning tendencies and their effects on how the airplane flies. So I would like to take just a few minutes to review the concept. Our discussion of turning tendencies will be limited to single engine propeller driven airplanes with the propeller pulling us rather than pushing us. We will also assume that we have a US built engine that rotates clockwise as viewed from the pilot seat. That will include most small general aviation airplanes. There are four turning tendencies to discuss. Torque reaction, spiraling slipstream, gyroscopic precession, and asymmetric propeller loading. Turning tendencies are often all grouped together and referred to as torque, but that is not technically correct. These are four individual tendencies and we will look at each one separately. Torque is a roll tendency and it operates whenever the propeller is turning. We recall that the propeller is turning clockwise as viewed from the pilot seat or counterclockwise as viewed from the front of the airplane as seen here. For every action, there is an equal and opposite reaction. So the airplane wants to roll opposite the propeller rotation or to the left as seen by the pilot. The more mass of the crankshaft and the propeller and the higher the RPM, the more roll tendency is produced. While torque is a roll tendency, it also results in a yaw tendency when the airplane is on the ground because the left tire is pressed harder to the runway and more friction is created, causing the airplane to want to yaw to the left. Spiraling slipstream is a yaw tendency and also operates whenever the propeller is turning. As the air leaves the propeller, it spirals under the wing, whether the airplane is a high wing or low wing design, and strikes the left side of the vertical stabilizer or tail, causing the nose to yaw toward the left. Gyroscopic precession is a yaw tendency, but only operates when the airplane is changing its pitch attitude. When we are maintaining a constant pitch attitude, regardless of what it is, gyroscopic precession does not operate. A characteristic of a gyroscope, and that's what our spinning propeller becomes, is that when a force is applied to the disc, it will react as if the force was applied in the same direction, but 90 degrees through the plane of rotation. So remember which way our propeller is rotating. As the airplane pitches up, as during the takeoff rotation, it is as if the force was applied to the top of the disc. Think of it as if you could only control the airplane by pressing on the propeller disc and you wanted to pitch up. You would press on the top of the disc. The reaction as if the force was applied 90 degrees through the plane of rotation, which would be on the right side of the disc, producing a yaw toward the right. Note that this is the only turning tendency that produces a force to the right. In small general aviation airplanes with relatively small diameter propeller discs, this force is barely perceptible. This can be a more noticeable force during the takeoff of a tail dragger. The first pitch movement is to raise the tail which is actually the downward pitching movement as far as the propeller is concerned. So the apparent applied force is to the bottom of the propeller disc, which results in a reaction as if the force had been applied to the left side of the disc, and therefore results in a left yaw. This of course is added to the left turning tendency produced by torque, and it's also happening very early in the takeoff run when the airspeed is very low, making the rudder much less effective. It's not a huge factor in the smaller tail draggers with relatively low horsepower engines and relatively small diameter propeller discs, but large single engine tail draggers such as the Stearmans and especially the Warbirds can be a real handful because of this factor. Asymmetric propeller loading or P-factor is a yaw tendency. P-factor only operates when the airplane is at a high angle of attack. The higher the angle of attack, the more pronounced it becomes. At a high pitch attitude, the descending blade is advancing into the relative wind and has a higher angle of attack than the ascending blade. Therefore, it develops more lift, or actually thrust. As viewed from the pilot seat, the descending blade is on the right side of the longitudinal axis, so the turning tendency is to the left. Obviously, the higher the power setting, the greater the p-factor. So, for review, we can see that torque operates whenever the propeller is turning and produces a roll tendency. Spiraling slipstream also operates whenever the propeller is turning and produces a yaw tendency. Gyroscopic precession operates only while the pitch of the airplane is changing and it produces a yaw tendency. And finally, P-factor operates only when the airplane is at a high angle of attack and it also produces a yaw tendency.
Manufacturers build corrections into the airplane design to compensate for torque and spiraling slipstream during cruise. Just a quick word about typical ways that manufacturers build in corrections for the turning tendencies so that we don't need to apply aileron or rudder pressure during cruise. One method is to cant the engine slightly to the right. This produces a right yaw tendency and works to compensate for spiraling slipstream during cruise. As a roll correction to compensate for torque during cruise, the manufacturers often attach the left wing at a slightly higher angle of incidence than the right wing. That causes the left wing to always be flying at a slightly greater angle of attack than the right wing and therefore be developing slightly more lift. This arrangement explains why many airplanes tend to drop off on the left wing during an aerodynamic stall. Since the left wing is at a slightly greater angle of attack, it exceeds the critical angle of attack and stalls before the right wing. So there we have a quick look at the turning tendencies. Please check out my website, genebenson.com, for lots more aviation information, including free online courses, many for FAA Wings credit. While on my site, be sure to join my mailing list to receive my free monthly newsletter, Vectors for Safety. And please remember that flying is just as safe as we choose to make it.